So, since I've made a lot of videos about mold avoidance, I wanted to make a quick video uh, talking about why I am going to have surgery, most likely, um, and, you know, probably all of the questions related to that that onlookers might have, like, why would you need surgery if you do mold avoidance and it helps, or, um, why would you ever do surgery, it's evil western medicine or whatever, and, um, I mean, it's so, in short, like I've said in the other videos and in, uh, things I've written, um, most likely a combination of an initial infection and mold with nanoparticles or whatever the toxin we react to, um, caused inflammation that damaged my ligaments and gave me craniocervical instability, which is where, uh, your ligaments are lax, so your skull sinks down and it compresses your brain stem, and it causes a lot of problems, um, and the connection between that and ME-CFS is sort of new. Um, regardless, I'm a really good candidate for surgery in a lot of ways. Um, I have a re response to traction that's beneficial, which is where you just get your head pulled on, pulled off of your spine. It kind of mimics surgery. Um, my measurements are kind of extreme. But I had already been diagnosed with this by the time I started doing mold avoidance last summer. Um, but we were just like, you know, I was realizing that this was also a factor and I wanted to experiment with, like, my reactions to our house and air outside were a factor and we wanted to experiment with, um, just finding me pristine air to breathe before jumping to surgery. Not that I had a problem with surgery, but we wanted to see how far this could take us. And I think... We kind of have seen that. Not that we could, couldn't work harder or whatnot, but I mean, there is sort of a ceiling that I think corresponds to some neck issues um, in terms of our the progress I make with mold avoidance. And um, there's a scientific explanation that's pretty simple. Um, well, maybe not that simple, but where it's a chicken and an egg thing like of course the the mold or toxins cause the initial ligament damage but then once you have that and your skull sinks down and whatnot it is obstructing cerebral spinal fluid flow um and that flow is how your brain washes itself and detoxes and gets rid of metabolic waste products and even stuff like heavy metals and I think mycotoxins. Like, uh, this isn't just speculation, it's based on some literature I've read. Um, so yeah, so the CCI might have been caused by the mold, but now it causes impaired detox. And while surgery might seem a little bit crude, um, my ligaments are damaged and I, by a bunch of infections and environmental exposures and it's also possible maybe even probable that I have some congenital birth defects like a tethered cord that is pulling down on my um, craniocervical junction so um, I mean the whole time I've been doing mold avoidance I get a lot of gains especially during the day but I sleep especially uh, I, I get sort of a lot sicker when I sleep, wake up feeling unrefreshed, sometimes like, uh, literally have tracked my oxygen and I'm not getting enough breathing, and I think it corresponds to this, uh, CCI thing, um, but beyond that, I think the analogy that I want to make about this to people who think, well, you know, Western medicine is good for if you're having a baby or, you know, you get in a car accident, but it's not good for chronic conditions. Um, I don't really see there being a really thick line there or um, a hard line. It's, it's a, 
Uh, not that simple. I would uh, give the example of, okay, say that from living in mold, um, this makes you not absorb vitamin D well. Let's just say that. Um, just make it up as a scenario, whether or not that actually happens. And so uh, it causes your bones, living in mold causes your bones to become brittle. You have osteopenia or osteoporosis. And then you break your leg quite easily. Um, so, um, and say that somewhere around that time you also realize that it was the mold that caused the osteopenia. Does that mean you don't go to the hospital and get your legs set um, and make sure you're not in shock or, you you know, whatever, um, and whatnot? Uh, does that mean that if you needed bolts to hold your leg together, you wouldn't get them or whatever? Um, I don't think so. So why would we draw the line at, say, a ligament being damaged by mold? And I'd say in that analogy, of course, you don't want to go and break your leg again. So you want to get out of mold in the future, not cause that damage. But that doesn't mean you wouldn't set the leg. You wouldn't have the surgery. You wouldn't go to the ER with a broken leg. So for me, this is extreme enough that that's the situation I feel like I'm in. I don't, I'm not 100% happy about the idea of having um, a major neurosurgery, um, you know, I won't be able to ski after, which I used to love to do as a kid, and since we'll be living in Taos, that'll be kind of bittersweet, um, but it's sort of like, it, it's at the point where almost no medical doctor thinks, I don't know, that my ligaments would just grow back, and so, and I've been in a collar for, year and a half because we've really been doing mold avoidance and it's had its payoffs you know even just from a palliative standpoint like uh making me feel better on a day-to-day -day basis my head clearing up euphoria but also you know f improvement in function and being able to walk um read etc um but anyway so you know, mold caused this damage to my ligaments along, along with um, infections. Like, for example, I got something that really felt like COVID back in March. And since then, my spine pain has gone from almost not there to like a nine a lot of days. Just like screaming in pain, taking six aspirin. Um, yeah, so that's... That's my thought, is that, you know, um, I don't think, I think that, uh, I don't think that Western medicine or science is inherently evil. Um, I think it's got its major blind spots and mold is one of them. And so I think I gotta go to a good neurosurgeon, get this fixed. I don't expect that neurosurgeon to be able to help me with preventing this happening again in the future. That's what I expect uh, all of you guys and Eric and everyone to help with um, the figuring out how to avoid what is causing that damage. Um, so yeah, uh, peace.